Okay, so we want to talk a little bit more about logs and using them. So we need to talk a little bit about how to manipulate them. And those are done really in things that we usually call properties of logs. But just so that you know, they're, they're kind of things that we use to move things around to get them into a useful format, okay? So one of the first properties of logs, and we'll talk about this in the context of natural logs, ln, uh, is that ln of the number one should be equal to zero. Okay, and you can see this pretty readily by switching again, and I, I encourage you guys, um, when you need to, to switch to the exponential form, like this is e to the zero is equal to one, which we know to be true, right? Okay, um, the second property of logs, natural log one is zero, um, we also get natural log of e is equal to one. And in here, I just want to, because e is going to happen two places when I do this switch, remember? So I had this log, um, base b of a is equal to c, right? In this case, the base is not written, but when I switch, the base is really base e. So when I go over here to this other form, which is b to the c equals a, and I switch to this other form, b is playing the role of e, c is the role of 1, and a is again this number e, so e to the first power is just e, and that's also just patently true. Okay? Okay. So those are used for simplifying expressions. When you get natural log of e, it's something that you can make simpler, right? It becomes the number one. Okay, so now we have a third property um, which says this natural log of um, u plus natural log of v is equal to natural log of uv. And let me just do an example. So again, I use these to manipulate things to get things um, to be easily solvable. So for example, natural log of 3 plus the natural log of 2 can be written as natural log of 3 times 2 which is natural log of 6, okay? Likewise, if I needed to split things up, let's say natural log of x times x plus 2, and I wanted to split that into two pieces, I would get natural log of x plus natural log of x plus 2, because right here is my multiplication. Do you see that? So I can split things along multiplication. I cannot split this at all, right? I'm splitting two things inside that are multiplied and I get this turns into addition here between two logs, but it's, that is not addition inside the log, okay? And this stuff that's happening right here, that's natural log, and I call that the inside of the log. That has, is something is happening to that to get your output, okay? And you cannot bring that out without doing something um, legal, okay? So please be careful about what's going on when things are inside and when things are outside, okay? And just carefully think about when and how you manipulate these. These rules that we're talking about are really the only legal rules that you have to manipulate logs. Okay, okay, I'm going to start talking about more of the properties. Uh, the fourth property um, is the um, quotient property, natural log of u over v, division inside the log is natural log of u minus natural log of v. Okay, this should be reminiscent of what happens with exponents, so here's an example natural log of x over y squared. That is the natural log of x minus the natural log of y squared. 
Okay? And likewise, I could go in the reverse direction. You use the direction that is useful to you. Okay? Um, okay. Let's go here. Uh, this fifth property, natural log of u to the r power. If I have a power inside a log, that the, there's this amazing property where this can come out front, just pop right out front and become a coefficient. And what's left inside is just u. So example, natural log of 2 to the fourth power is two, 4 times the natural log of 2. Or another example, natural log of x plus 3 squared is 2 natural log of x plus 3. Okay, careful. Natural log of x squared plus 2 is not 2 natural log of x plus 2 because this thing is not on everything that's inside the log. Okay? I need it to be on this whole shebang in order to pop this out front. Okay. So finally, let's say um, the sixth property is what I would call the inverse property. And that is that the natural log of e to the x power is just x. And again, if you write this as an exponential equation, again, we have this idea log base b of a is equal to c, right? And I have these different things playing different roles. And this goes over to b to the c is a. Oops, my c looks like an a. I don't want that. Okay. And so when I convert this to a, an exponential equation, b is playing the role is e in this case, and c is right here, my x. And then a is this whole piece right here. So you're really just writing this statement that is, again, patently true. It just becomes weird to see it in logs, it's like e to the x is equal to e to the x. Yes, that's true. Okay. Okay, let's do one more. Um, so you have these problems where you have to expand. I want to do one of those using these properties. So expand using the properties. And again, I'll say it, if you're going to change the log in any significant way, you should be using one of these properties to do that. Okay? So here's my problem. Law, natural log, x to the fourth, y cubed. Now, I can't use this power rule to pop this out front because they're not the same. But I want to look right here, and there's a multiplication that I'll take advantage of. So that's natural log of x to the fourth plus natural log of y cubed. Okay, I can split that. Now x, everything inside the log is raised to the fourth power, so this can become four natural log of x and three natural log of y. And then that's as far as I can go. Okay, I'll remind you here that a lot of times we see something like this, natural log of x plus 2 and the square root. And this I want to think of as x plus 2 to the 1 half power. And that 1 half power can come right out front. Okay? Okay. Let's do some where we um, combine. So combine using the properties. So I have 3 natural log of x plus 3 
minus natural log of x. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do is bring this here back inside. And then when I have the subtraction between these two pieces, I can combine them into one log with division between these arguments right here. Uh, not this whole thing in the second one, but x, right? So I have one log, and then x plus 3 is in the numerator, and x is in the denominator. Okay? Okay, so those are the properties of the logs. Um, yeah, please let me know if you have questions. We'll do some practice with that.